Luis Severino, I thought this was his best start since that stretch of 18 at the beginning of the season. Uh, it really was, and it was Boston's A lineup, too. They have not clinched yet, and don't think for a minute that Boston wouldn't love to do that here at Yankee Stadium. They would celebrate on the field, clinch the division, tear up the clubhouse with a bunch of champagne. So they had the A lineup. Severino met the match. Uh, he mixed his pitch as well. He's getting swing and misses again. They're not fouling him off with two strikes as much as they were during his recent struggles. So, yeah, it was all good for Severino tonight. Now, I know, Paul, that you've always been a proponent of using the whole field. As a hitter, you always went to left field as a left-handed batter. You had to like what you saw out of Luke Voigt, and also Miguel Andujar used a short porch. Well, their offense was good tonight, and it, it seems to always revolve around the home runs, but they also added a lot of hits, and they did a lot of good things. I mean, yesterday coming into the seventh inning, we couldn't say a good thing about the Yankees, and then all of a sudden, they end up winning yesterday. They have a big offense explosion tonight. Severino's good. It's like the sun's coming out again, so, you know, you can only hope that the Yankees take this, continue to get better and get ready. Other than Snell and Tampa Bay, you'd have to say that David Price has been the best pitcher in the second half other than Snell, but uh, when you look at his numbers career-wise, he's got an ERA close to five against the Yankees, three against everybody else, and it's a different Yankee lineup than the one he faced with Tampa Bay, so is it in his head? Well, only he could truly answer that, but the numbers tell you a story that, yeah, maybe it was a little bit in his head. I think the reason you say that is because he looked tentative. You know, they're the walks. David Price has some of the best control in the big leagues. He rarely walks anybody. It was part of my scouting report. I almost had to tear up my scouting report <laughs> after, after he walked the first batter. So, yeah, there's something to it there because it looks like he's pitching differently now against the Yankees than he does against everybody else, and the numbers do tell a story with that in, in regards to that. Now, the Yankees activated Chapman before the game, so you could say all the pieces are in place, the puzzle is in place, now they have to put it together. There are 11 games remaining after this. How important is it to get on a run for them to feel complete and go into the playoffs feeling good about themselves? Well, I, I think you also have to, to realize what's happening. You've got a, a chance to sweep Boston, which is a feather in your cap. You also got a chance to get closer to getting that home field. You got Baltimore coming in for a home series, but then you've got four tough games in Tampa Bay. Those games kind of scare me because Tampa Bay's still playing for something. So I, I think it's very important that the Yankees finish out this homestand and get some things done. And finally, David, does just, Justice Sheffield sleep tonight, or is he staring at the ceiling excitedly? Yeah, you're up all night. You know? I mean, you're up all night to get lucky, right? I mean, that, that's the way I'd be right now. I mean, there's no way you could sleep tonight. You, you have to just soak it all in. You got your family in town. You mentioned it. and uh, Yeah, I'm going. Where are we going? Let's that's go. That's a little Death Punk, wasn't it? A little <laughs> yes. get lucky. Thank you for clearing that, that it wasn't really a declarative statement. Bob, take this back. <laughs>